Rob Nelson here. Get inside. It is wet outside. <laughs> I have actually been asked by Adobe to be an ambassador for their new program. So I made some videos on their channel. I just wanted to make a video kind of just for you guys that kind of walks you through the basic editing platform of this mobile to desktop editing solution, kind of walk through how I think it could be really useful and when it's not so useful, but to give you just my honest opinion on it. Um, but I did want to throw out ahead of time that I was working with Adobe on this. I'm actually also editing this in Adobe Rush right now. So it's uh, a little more basic than some of our videos, but it doesn't really matter. Um, I think it's pretty simple. I'm going to do a screen recording right here. You can capture and edit everything on your Apple phone or tablet, and then you can instantly transfer it to the desktop solution because it lives in the cloud. I think that's just kind of a neat feature um, because one of the things I have found over the last few years is that I've been hosting all of these shows. I've hosted 32 different shows for uh, mostly the Discovery Network and I will often shoot with my phone or with the GoPro which links to my phone and then I'll have a hour car ride both ways to set in the morning and in the afternoon and I oftentimes will put out posts but there's been no really easy way for me to edit on the go. Adobe Clip I think is what it's called is what I had been using but there are some things that I couldn't find in it in particular editing vertical video. Adobe Rush allows you to do all that so let me just kind of start here into the program. This is the screen that you'll get at the beginning. Let's create a new project we'll call this GoPro 7 because I'm testing out the new GoPro 7 and here are all the pro the different videos that I have to choose from. I'm just going to choose one for now because I kind of want to show you the next screen. This is just going to drop it into the timeline and it will create your project. Okay, so this is one clip. Um, I can kind of change the ins and the outs by clicking and dragging right here, um, but I want to work with more media. Okay, so that's what you do right here. You just click Add Media. And here you can see a whole bunch of different clips. So I'm going to start out by only adding the A-roll. Now, the first thing I'm going to start out with is just one clip that's explaining what I'm doing. That's this one right here. So we're going to add that clip. Okay, let's just delete that one while we're at it. Now, let's listen to it. Wet, wet. Hey everybody, Rob Nelson here. I wanna to talk today about the GoPro Hero 7. We've been doing a bunch of comparisons. We took it to the beach, we took it into the waves so that you could get slow-mo shots. Then we took it to a corn maze. And in all of this, we are comparing the GoPro Hero 7 with the GoPro Hero 5. And so I hope you get a lot out of it. So let's get started. Okay, we'll pause it right there. Uh, that's the end of my clip. The rest of this is a little bit of footage of me running out of the rain. So the first thing I'm going to do is I can either grab the tail end of my clip and trim it, or I can just slice this into two clips. So I think the first thing I'll do is slice it into two clips, which is the scissor button over here. Now, uh, you can always see on these clips uh, a shortcut right there. You see that? On a Mac, it'll give me the command K. And so I'll just do the shortcut right here, Command K. That splits it into two clips. And then also at the beginning, because I didn't start until here, hey everybody, I'll trim that clip up like this. Now, this program uses a magnetic timeline. So I can take this clip, I can drag it this way, I can drag it that way. It's kind of cool. The other thing that you'll notice is that I was actually shooting with the GoPro Hero 7 at 1440, which is their four by three setting, which it's, it's so it's 1920 by 1440. So I'm just going to go over here to one of the tools. There's, there's a whole bunch of different tools you can use here. Now, this is going to also look th about the same on your tablet or on your phone. Um, so I'm just going to change the width so that it's 100 percent roughly. Well, that doesn't matter so much, but let's just go 100. And now I can change the vertical position up and down. Down, and that's why you shoot four by three. Now what we're going to do is we're going to work on adding a little bit of b-roll to this clip according to what I'm saying. I'm talking about how we went to the beach and how we went to the corn maze and I have b-roll for both of those. So this is the first clip I was talking about using the camera. Let's add that to the top. Um, let's see where's some other b-roll of uh, here, here's some b-roll. <laughs> that's good slow-mo footage from the camera. Uh, here's the corn maze. Uh, so we'll drag the corn maze in here at the end. And the only reason I do that is um, I want to look at this corn maze footage and see what I want to use. 
So this is using the, they call it hyper smooth on the GoPro. Oh, that's probably all I need. Okay, we'll go command K, split that clip, hit that clip, delete that clip. Then we'll move this one up and over. And by the way, you can zoom in and out by hitting minus and plus, minus and plus. Rob Nelson, I need to add a title because I add titles to everything. Okay, so you can click this little title button. Now I'm looking for a lower third. That's usually what I would do. Let's go with this orange one for now. Drag it into the beginning. We'll double click on that. Say Rob Nelson as the subtitle. I'll just probably put my handle, which is both my Twitter and Instagram, Untamed Science. Hey everybody, Rob Nelson here. I wanna to talk today about the GoPro Hero 7. We've been okay, GoPro Hero 7, that's what I'm talking about. Let's change it. Let's move that around just a little bit. You can hear the background audio coming in. We don't want that. So I click on the audio button here. Uh, there's a lot, of, bunch of powerful audio tools here. I'm going to mute this audio. Don't want that to come in at all because wh why do you need it? You don't really need it. Uh, there's call out titles like here. I'll drag and drop this one in that you can quickly add what you want. GoPro Hero 7. Okay, let's just say GoPro Hero 7, because that's the B-roll that I want to add. Okay, GoPro Hero 7. Let's listen to the rest of it. We've been doing a bunch of comparisons. We took it to the beach. To the beach, definitely want to add that. Beach. We took it in. Okay, this is too loud. Let me just delete, mute that. Into the waves so that you can get slow-mo shots. Then we took it to a corn maze. Okay, right there when I say we took it to a corn maze, I'll back up. We got to add the corn maze footage because that's your B-roll. <laughs> All right, so that just shows you how you might put together a piece. I could add to this indefinitely. Um, and remember, this is really powerful for doing quick social things because you can do this on your phone and then you can finish it off on the desktop. Uh, they told me they are going to make it so that uh, – you will be able to send it to Adobe Premiere in the future, which is kind of nice because I like finishing things in Adobe Premiere. There's not all the quick keys that you would normally use in an editing program like in Final Cut or Adobe. And I've been doing this since 2001. Um, most of the time, this hand is on the keyboard hitting short keys. Whereas this hand is on the mouse and I'm just scrolling around, moving the timeline where I need it. In this case, there's not a lot of short keys. You're, you're kind of clicking everything with the mouse, which is a little bit slower. It gets rid of some of the temp technical aspects of doing the editing and just lets people concentrate on telling the story and getting their media out there. Um, here's just a couple extra features. Now, if you go down here, this is how you would ha add transitions from one clip to the next. So most of the time, I encourage people to do simple cuts, but there are a couple extra ones here. Dip to black, dip to white, and cross dissolve. And then you also have color presets over here. These are all really nice. You could add cinematic looks to things or film look. And then one of the great things here is all of the audio is kind of dummy proof, which can make it a little bit frustrating if you are an audio guy because you have very little control over this. But one thing that you'll notice is this particular clip, for instance, right here should be voice. Let's change it to voice. Let's also enhance the speech to male. And then um, right now, these are muted, so they're not gonna be in there. If I were to say add um, more media like music, let's do that real quick. Let's just scroll down to, uh, this one's pretty good. I'll just add it in there at the bottom. Um, this clip will actually come in and I'm gonna change, change it to right there because I know that's when it gets nice. So this clip right here is already labeled as music. What this Adobe Rush program will do is it dips it down when you're talking. And it, it, you won't be able to see it here because essentially I'm talking the whole time in this clip, but you can see the music and the audio come out perfectly. Hey everybody, Rob Nelson here. I wanna to talk today. Then it brings me to my favorite feature, which is right over here, which is the crop and rotate. It allows you to change the perspective of each individual clip as you're editing. And that's really handy because if you were to go up to orientation and say, instead of horizontal, change it to vertical, say you're making a story, then you're gonna to wanna to very quickly and easily change every clip so that it fits. All I do is go to this clip and increase the size. So there you go, very quickly and easily, I made something that would fit into an Instagram story. I think this is just a really nice feature. And that's pretty much all there is to this program. It's fairly simple. If you're not already using it on your phone, I would highly encourage you to just download it because it will help your social posts. Also, for those of you who are science communicators watching uh, who don't already do all of the professional stuff like I do, I think this might be where you want to go with your stuff. Pretty professional, a lot of good titles, a lot of good color grading tools. You can layer things. 
but you don't have to have a huge desktop and worry about media managing and all this. It's stored up in the cloud. It's kind of nice. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. A big shout out to our patrons who are allowing us to do this every week. Really appreciate that. And we'll see you in the next one.